Submarines are some of the most mysterious military objects that are of keen interest to the public. What is the largest submarine in the world? What purpose was it built for? And what does it look like from the inside? About this and much more in our video. The days of the arms race are long behind us, as is the Soviet Union along with an army of unimaginable size. To this day, however, Soviet Typhoon-class submarines remain the largest man-made submarines the world has ever seen. At 175 meters in length, 23 meters in width, and 12 meters in draft, the submarines are large by any standard. In comparison, the largest submarine in the United States arsenal, the Ohio-class boats, displace 19,000 tons, while the Typhoon, or as she is called, the Shark, 48,000 tons. The boats have 19 compartments, including a reinforced module that houses the main control room, as well as an electronic equipment bay above the main hulls and launch tubes behind. Constructed in part from high-quality titanium construction and several sturdy hulls, the vessels are tough enough to surface right through the ice. At times of active operation, about 160 crew members could be in the boat at one time, with voyages lasting quite a bit, about 120 days. Shark's diving depth was 400 meters. As for autonomy limitations, there are two, crew fatigue and food, but it can also be brought up. From seawater, the boat itself can make fresh water, drinking water, and produce oxygen. There are also hatches on the ship that can be used to load spare parts, food, and other things needed for a long trip. Under the lower deck, there is a provision chamber where the necessary stock of food is stored. Moreover, a television system was specially developed for the ship. A camera was installed which allowed monitoring of the reactor compartment where there were no people. After a tour of the shark, despite the age of the ship, it becomes clear that there are still many things that are still classified, and the time has not come to talk about them openly. Originally, boats carrying nuclear ballistic warheads were designed to literally bring the entire Western world to nuclear apocalypse in the event of active action in the well-known Cold War. Of the seven planned typhoons, six were built back in the 1980s, but as early as the 1990s, the US and Canadian governments began offering financial incentives to Russia as a legal heir to the Soviet Union to decommission a number of its warships as part of the disarmament and nuclear deterrent strategy. As a result, only three typhoons remained alive. To date, only one is active. The other two have been placed in reserve. The only operational submarine, later named after the Grand Prince of Moscow, Dmitry Donskoy, serves as a test platform for the latest Russian submarine-launched cruise missiles, although its days are also coming to an end due to the introduction of new Russian submarines with Bore ballistic missiles. The Bore-class submarines carry 16 Bulava missiles with a total explosive yield of 7,200 kilotons, and the Bulava missiles are much more accurate than their predecessors. Russia plans to build at least eight Bore submarines split between the Northern Atlantic and Pacific fleets. The other two typhoons currently in reserve, the Angra Skull and the Severstal, are also likely to be decommissioned soon, ending the history of the largest ballistic missile submarines ever built. However, nowadays, according to the general director of the shipyard, which deals with these submarines, typhoons are no longer needed because technology has gone forward, and this is logical. The combat capabilities of ship are determined not by size, but by its tactical and technical characteristics. The number of missiles, warheads, immersion depth, sailing speed, stealth, Budnichenko says. That is why today the Typhoons have been replaced by the boats of the fourth generation. If we talk about strategies, they are Boreas. And today they are much more formidable than typhoons, or as they are also called, sharks, and have a number of advantages. Stealth, physical fields, and tactical and technical characteristics. Time is moving forward. The design of these giants is highly original. Inside the typhoon are a pair of long, robust hulls from old Delta-class ballistic missile submarines and three other smaller hulls placed around the boat to protect critical points such as engineering rooms and torpedo bays. In the event of a breach, whether a collision or an attack, the crew inside the other sturdy hulls would be safe and the submarine would remain operational. Boat designer Kovalov repeatedly expressed that the decision to place missiles between two parallel solid hulls was a very brave decision and called this option exotic. And accordingly, this architecture required an entirely new approach to submarines' devices, rudders, propellers, antennas, and other mechanisms. 
Two nuclear reactors give these warships the power they need to operate, providing a top speed of about 27 knots underwater, 31 miles per hour. Instead of constantly crossing the world's ocean, the typhoons were built to sit above the Arctic Circle for months on end, waiting to break through the ice and launch their deadly nuclear tip missiles. Because of this location strategy, these submarines often avoided pursuit by American and British submarine hunters constantly roaming the Atlantic Ocean in search of Soviet warships. The boat is capable of breaking ice up to 2.5 meters thick with its hull, but it has no effect on steering as the boat has a light outer and strong inner hull. The ship has a special instrument that measures the ice thickness. First, the crew looks for an ice hole. Then, the bow of the boat is lifted, after the deckhouse takes place. The lightweight hull has a rubber coating on top, designed to improve stealth. Another very noteworthy quality of these boats is the atypical setting of such a vessel. Because of the length of their mission, the Typhoons were designed with crew comfort in mind. The accommodations aboard the Typhoon were so luxurious that sailors in the Soviet and later Russian Navy nicknamed these giant vessels Floating Hiltons. Instead of the aesthetic steel furniture with minimal upholstery, the Typhoon's interior features wood-paneled walls, comfortable upholstered chairs, raised ceilings, and full-length doorways, and a fully stocked gym. Unlike any other submarine ever built, each Typhoon also had a lounge for sailors including a swimming pool and sauna. Yes, yes, you didn't mishear that. Typhoons were actually built with small pools two feet deep to improve crew morale during long days underwater, as well as saunas and a lounge area with a cushioned rocking chairs. Televisions, a luxury in the Soviet Navy, were also installed throughout the boat, broadcasting Soviet films and TV programs to entertain the crew. Interestingly, these seating areas were decorated as if they were somewhere on land. Wooden floors, traditional Soviet white tiles, and even carpets in the living room. You will definitely get the feeling that you have come to Russia when you tour. Some products, including alcoholic beverages, may also have been on the ship to lift the spirits of the crew. Agree, 120 days under the water without sunlight on a constant alert clearly increases the stress level, so such liberties are quite justified. But don't think the crew members felt like they were on a cruise ship. They had to get permission to use a sauna, the pool, or the gym. Even though their mental health is important, responsibilities are paramount. Even if the water was calm and there were no enemies nearby, Officers might not give such permissions because a pool might simply be occupied. Former Typhoon submarine crew members recall that these restrooms were often filled with food when the submarine was in port. They still jokingly say that the potato bags spent more time in the pool than they did. In autonomous mode, the entire crew is divided into three combat shifts, one on watch, the second resting, and the third engaged in various jobs. The second shift can not only sleep, but also watch movies, play chess, or listen to music. And accordingly, the meals are also scheduled for shifts, three breakfasts, three lunches, and three dinners. The galley works in emergency mode, 24 hours a day. It has its own special team, which also works in shifts. Another feature that added to the mystique of the Typhoon-class submarines was their lack of noise. The Typhoon submarines were among the quietest Soviet naval vessels ever in service quieter and more maneuverable than those that came before them. While the long range of these missiles allowed the submarine to strike anywhere in the continental United States from across the Arctic Circle. The current submarine is commonly referred to as a fourth generation submarine because of its extensive modifications. It is powered by two nuclear water reactors, two 50,000 horsepower steam turbines, and four 3,200 kilowatt turbine generators, giving the boat the ability to sail at speeds of 22.2 knots on the surface and up to 27 knots underwater. In its current configuration, the Dmitry Donskoy has 20 launchers for the Russian RSM-56 Bulava ballistic missiles. In the original configuration, each ballistic missile could carry 10 independent nuclear warheads that could wipe out more than one country, but we don't really know if the Dmitry Donskoy is still capable of a nuclear strike. This also means that we don't know for sure how many fully operational ballistic missile submarines Russia has. Because the Cold War never escalated, there is no evidence that Typhoon-class submarines were ever involved in combat. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, it was suggested that submarines be used to transport oil and natural gas under the polar ice to distant Russian outposts. As recently as 2019, the Russian Navy's Vice Admiral insisted that this class of submarines be equipped with hundreds of cruise missiles, essentially giving these submarines new life as mass retaliatory missile carriers. However, this may simply be an attempt to restore some of the prestige lost when half of the legendary typhoons were shamefully scrapped with the US and Canadian dollars. 
Ziganov, the current commander of the Shark, has repeatedly emphasized in interviews the uniqueness of this project and that for its time it was a very breakthrough scientific and technical solution. The fact that the weapons are a little outdated, yes, but the carrier itself is made according to a very interesting scheme, has a phenomenal survivability, which is very important for a submarine, Ziganov said. The ship has very good living conditions for the crew, which is not available to her submarine brothers in other submarines. And the most important thing is that we have normal outposts, well-placed equipment, and options for replacing it. An interesting fact is that Typhoon-class submarines served as the inspiration for the famous novel and later film The Hunt for Red October, starring Sean Connery, where he plays a Soviet naval captain who wants to escape to the United States with his officers on the Soviet Navy's newest and most advanced missile submarine. He is pursued by a former student and Soviet captain played by Stellan Skarsgård. The film has won several awards as well as high praise for the technology used and has become a classic of world cinema. It's amazing that a submarine still has something to boast about after all this time. Write in the comments what kind of combat equipment would you like to see?